Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the ESC. Now this is going to be a series that goes very deep into ESCs, how they're created, how to debug them, and how to figure out an issue and even possibly build your own. I've done the building your own ESC uh, previously, however it's not finished, but you'll get to see that as time goes on. So what are we doing today? Now I've decided to break apart the ESC into parts to show you by example here and as well as under the microscope. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start with component component. PCBWay is one of the largest PCB manufacturers and is a really great place to have your PCB manufacturer. Whether you're a hobbyist or a company, it is a great place to go. They have fast service, great quality, great customer support and a file pre-check service where they have a human actually check your file before proceeding with the print printing service in order to reduce any chances of error. Not only that, they have assembly services and they have much, much more. So go ahead and check the links down below to PCBWay.com. Today we're starting out with the MOSFET driver, which is found on 95% of all ESCs. So we're going to take a look at its common characteristics and some of the complementary components that are connected with the FET driver. Now here's my open hardware ESC schematic. I've pulled out the MOSFET driver schematic to show you by example where everything is and hopefully you gain some knowledge and later on will apply this knowledge into fixing ESCs. I've gotten people who've contributed to some broken ESCs which we'll try to fix in a later video. However, now what we're going to do is start with the anatomy and talk about the FET driver and the things to look for and to show you how they're basically identical. Uh, just about every single ESC except for like I know two of them which is T-Motor not always sometimes have this FET driver uh, T-Motor and I think KISS uh, ESCs don't use this FET driver but some T-Motor ESCs do use this MOSFET driver but everything else here uses that FET driver. This is the latest and greatest from Hobbywing. Someone sent it to me and I think it's Hobbywing because previously I tested one of these and it burned. It was like a couple months ago when they released like their new high end. Everyone was talking great about it. Everybody was telling me to get it in and on my first test it blew. We also have some Mambas, the newer one and the older one and we have some older typhoon escs some really cheap you know every just we're gonna take a look at everything basically and to show you how all of them are actually identical and you go grab your own esc and uh you'll see the same exact thing that we're gonna take a look at so let's get started here now first of all i think we should start looking at the schematic before hopping into the microscope all right so here is the schematic of the mosfet driver and which one is the mosfet driver you might say they come in two packages one looks like this which is exactly the same thing, just the pins placements are different, and one looks like this. Now, if it's a BB2 chip, it's going to be the chip that's slightly larger. That would be the MOSFET driver here, and this would be the BB2 chip. Now, F3s and uh, you know F1 uh, ESCs will be slightly larger, but for example, this is another BB2 chip, and then there's the four tier. Without even reading it, I could already immediately tell. And here's some other ESCs where you can see that as well. It's the bigger chips here. You see there's a FET driver for each ESC, and um, you get the point here. So what does the MOSFET driver do? Well, as the name implies, it drives the MOSFETs. And before that, you have the BB2 chip or the microcontroller unit, whatever it could be, an F3 and F1 for the BL Heli 32 ESCs. The FET driver is always there. It's the one right in the middle between the microcontroller, the brain, and the MOSFETs themselves. This is what actually drives the FETs and drives each phase. Now, if you take a look at any ESC, you'll find three pads, if it's not a foreign one. But that is a motor right here. And as you can tell, we have in one, in two, and in three, but this is low in. So we have a low side and a high side because what a ESC does here with the FETs is it makes each phase either neutral, positive, or negative. That's why it's a AC current, which is why we get a lot of noise because you're not really supposed to put an AC with DC circuits together and this is what an ESC actually does. It converts DC to AC here and that's what AC is. It's three phases. Now if we take a closer look here we find that on this side we have the inputs. We have the line in and then here we have the high in. So these here, the line in one, two, and three, are going to be the input from the microcontroller unit, which is the brain. This will enable the low side, which is the negative side of the phase. For example, here we have this ESC right here. So for example, one, two, and three corresponds to the pads here, one, two, and three. And also one, two, and three corresponds to the pads one, two, and three. However, when the microcontroller unit wants this one to be low, it'll enable line in one or low input one and that will be a negative voltage and if you wanted it to be high then it would enable this pin here 
and these are coming directly from the microcontroller unit which we're not going to be covering we're going to cover that when we get into the microcontroller unit but this is the only three that it needs from the microcontroller unit to control the phase of each mosfet now let's zoom out a little bit let's get to the good stuff here so what we have is we have the low one low two and low three this is the output so when this is when line one is enabled then this will actually go and connect to one of the fats to enable it to be uh, a negative for example and the same thing we also have ho one ho two and ho three here's ho one here's ho two and here's ho three and these again this is when you know the high end one is enabled then it'll output the high output one for the fat so it knows it'll be on a high output which is like a positive output if you might say so now let's take a look at something called the VS pins. We have VS1, we have VS2, and we also have VS3. And what I call these voltage sense bridges. And what they are is when the motor is spinning, and for example, this phase is off, it'll bring back a voltage. And that voltage is sensed through this here in order to know what phase to turn on next. And the reason this is useful is because these are sensorless ESCs, which means they don't have a sensor, so they don't know where the motor is at any current time. However, what they do is they sense that back EMF and then which is the back voltage because the motors are basically also generators and figure out what phase to turn on next. So let's take a look at this. The FET driver is very, very simple. Actually, it doesn't need much going on for it here. Now, you might be like, OK, well, where are these connected? Uh, well, the VS1, for example, will need a capacitor and a diode. And one side of the diode will be connected to VBAT here. And we're going to see that under the microscope. And basically, we have a diode capacitor, diode capacitor, diode capacitor. That, that's really all it has right now. And on the outputs, it'll just have a resistor, resistor. For each output, it'll have one resistor, which we're also going to take a look at right now. So let's put this to the side and let's hop onto the microscope and take a closer look here. All right. So here, we're going to take a look at a couple examples. Right now, we have this really cheap ESC. And this is the MOSFET driver on this ESC. And this is the BB2 chip. So here we can see a diode a capacitor, a diode, a capacitor, a diode and a capacitor. And that is what we just saw on the schematic. And that is found everywhere. So let's bring in another example here. Let's bring in something newer. Uh, which one is this one? Okay, let's bring in the latest Mamba ESC. It's a BLHI32 ESC. Right now we're looking at the FET side here. So nothing really interesting. Let's take a look at the back side here. So we can see that right now, it's not like the BB2 chip. Now we see it's the smaller chip is the 4T here because these are using, I think the F3s or F1s, I don't, I can't see that right now, but it really doesn't matter. What we want to look for is again, the diode and the capacitor. Are those available? Look at this, diode, capacitor, diode, capacitor, diode, capacitor. And if we go here, then we can actually figure out that this should be connected here. These should be connected here. And this one should be connected here. And here again, diode capacitor for that one, diode capacitor for each phase. And can you see that? Now, now you kind of understand how everything works. Now, these resistors, they might get you a little bit confused also, but we will cover those and they will actually make a lot of sense. There is a minimum amount of capacitors that should be on a board. And I'll explain that in a later step, but I'll also probably give you some information about that today. Now, here's a really cheap ESC. I'll have it linked down below. And again, guys, if you do gain any knowledge, I really would love if you guys could support the channel. Um, that would be super great. I'm actually thinking of doing some live streams like this where you guys could ask questions. And um, if you do gain anything, it would be super great if you could just give back to the channel because I need all the support I could truly get right now. Now, let's grab this cheap ESC here. Immediately, what we can see this actually you could read this without even the microscope but because of the lighting. This is the four tier chip. And we need to look for those three diodes and three capacitors. Well, here's one, two, three. And then here's one, two, three capacitors. The resistors we'll come back to again later because there's also a resistor that's coming in or they could be the ones that enable here. And we'll cover those later. I don't want to get too, too far ahead right now uh, to lose you. But I just want to show you how easy and simple it is to figure this out. So if you see a diode missing here, more than likely your FET probably is not dead and you just need to replace the diode. What's really nice here is you can kind of test them in a way to see if they're bad or not. For example, if there's a short circuit across this one directly, then it's bad. And again, it goes for every single one of them. And you can also test the voltage drop with specific, uh, you know, multimeters. You can have it in diode mode and you can check those if they went bad. And um, that's like one of the first things to kind of look for. So if there's a really, really big voltage spike or something, uh, the 
diode might go out as well here, so keep that in mind. But more than likely, usually just the FETs go out. And I do have a couple broken ones, which we're going to cover it later on. But I really want to take this, again, one step at a time. So each ESC will also have a voltage regulator, which we're not really going to cover that much. And that does add a little extra components on the PCB, depending if it's a switching regulator or an LDO regulator. But we're not going to get into that right now. Those just add a little bit more components that can make it kind of look a little bit more difficult to understand. So here's the latest and greatest from Hollywing. I still haven't tested this one. So can we also find those three diodes and three capacitors? Well, let's take a look here. Let's see, is it on this side? This side is just all FETs here. And uh, let's take a look at this. Now, another thing to look for, uh, this is just for fun, is when you read the FETs, see if you see, like, for example, if this one was like a 04PL and this one was like a 04PM, then that way you'll know immediately that you're using an N channel and a P channel MOSFET for the ESC, which is okay. But two end channels is better. And that's what we're seeing here, I think, currently. I'm just double checking all of them. And they all seem to be exactly identical here. So the new Hobby Wing, if for anyone, for anyone that cares, it's using two end channels, which is a good sign. It does have better filtration than its previous ones. And it also has a bigger, uh, bigger FETs this time for the 6S setups. So let's take a look at the back side here. Hmm. All right, so immediately we just found the FET drivers here and, you know, more than likely the, the components are going to be very close to it also. So here we have basically one ESC and one ESC and here's the microcontroller units for them. So if we come down here, here's, we'll start with this FET driver here. So can we find the diode and the capacitor? Well, here's the diode, here's the capacitor, here's the diode, here's the capacitor, here's the possibly this capacitor with this diode. And what you can do again is we can test them. And let me show you what I mean by we can test these. So let me just move this off to the side. All right, so here we're looking at an ESC. This is another one. Here's a great example, actually. You can see the three diodes and the three capacitors that are connected to the, the MOSFET driver here. Now, currently, unfortunately, in this one, the, on the other side, we have the pads for the uh, ESC. So we're not going to do a direct probe there. But what we can start off with is we can start looking for where these two are connected together. All right, so here, example right now, here's the diode. Here's one side of the diode. And we can actually just probe the capacitor and see which side's connected. Now it might look like I'm hitting these two together, but I'm actually not here. So we're going to have to find where this diode goes. Now it can go into two places. Sometimes you could find them going to the 5 volt regulator. Sometimes you could find them going to VBAT. And what we can do is first we have VBAT right here. It's difficult to see, but it's right there up top and it's not beeping. So here is one of the regulators and I think, yeah, this is the 3.3 volt regulator and this is the 5 volt regulator here if I, if I remember correctly. So as you can tell, it's connected to the 5 volt right there. And um, that way you'll know which side is connected to where. So if you're ever going to place it in or place in a new one and it was completely burnt and you can't figure out or make out where uh, the orientation was for it, now you could kind of get an idea of where it is. So the negative side of the diode will always connect to the FET driver side. So the negative side will connect to the FET driver side that's connected also with the capacitor. For example, this is the negative, so it would be connected with this one, connected directly with a line. Like, for example, just imagine a line in the middle going to one of the pins here. And this side will always be going to either the 5 volt, 3 volt, or the VBAT, whatever it might be. And uh, this way you'll know which orientation to place that in. Now, the capacitor doesn't really matter, and uh, you can just pull one of those out, measure its uh, uh, capacitance, and then stick it back in there. And uh, you should be good in that perspective. If that ever, you know, blew up or got hit or knocked off, you're, you should be totally fine in that perspective. You could easily do that. All right, so here I brought another ESC. There's something that I didn't print out the schematic for, which is each phase, remember how I said has a high output and a low output from the FET driver. So basically each phase has two FETs, a low one and a high one. And for each of those FETs, you need a high resistor and a low resistor for each FET that's doing the high or the low. Now, again, this is an all-in-one board with a flight control and everything. And we're looking at the backside and you could already notice the diode and the capacitors right here in this area. As you can tell, they are all basically exactly identical. And these extra capacitor, or these extra, sorry, these extra resistors here, they don't let them fool you. All they are is voltage dividers, so you don't burn this when the voltage is coming back. So the BB2 chip also knows what it's uh, doing. But we're going to keep that for a later video. For the people who understand some of this stuff, that'll make some sense to them. But yeah, we're going to come back to the BB2 chip in a, in a complete other video. So these resistors will always be anywhere between 10 ohms to 300 ohms. And these are currently 27 ohm resistors here. And these are in charge 
of opening the FET. So for example, the MOSFET driver will say enable the high FET for phase this one for this motor. And uh, it'll go through here and just imagine an imaginary line, go through the resistor and go to the high side of the FET, which is this one, and it'll enable it to be a positive. And if it needed it to be a negative, it would go out on the low one, go through this resistor, and then there's a, the low side, for example, just theoretical, is the FET on the other side. Uh, it's going to be difficult because I'm using some kind of platform to flip it. But on the other side, uh, it'll have the low one. Because as you can tell, I mean, uh, obviously most of you probably know this, that each ESC for each phase has two FETs. So maybe that's not really a clear example, but here's a really nice one right here. Let me actually just fix the right there. So you can see in every ESC, for example, you have two FETs for each phase. And uh, one's, one's connected to the negative, one's connected to the positive. And yeah, that goes to the motor, one negative, one positive, and it goes to the motor. And that's what we saw those resistors do in the place there. And that's what we see. One is connected to the negative, one's connected to the positive. One's connected to the negative FET, one's connected to the positive FET. And that's what we see here. And we're going to get into more detail in the FETs. And uh, all of this will start making more sense as we go along. And that's how simple most ESCs are actually it's not going to get much more complicated than this in my opinion and um, I think it's a really good uh, reference or really good place to start with the FET driver here then we can go on to the BB2 chip because the BB2 chip is not always a BB2 chip for example if we're using a BLH32 then it's going to be either an F1 or an F3 and we're going to have to get into the STM32s but the you know the, the four tier here is found just on every single thing well, not every single thing, but like 95% of everything on the market, you will see this guy in some sort of shape, as you can tell, the four tier here. Um, however, this will have its drawbacks in the upcoming futures. I, I believe so. But uh, until I finish my development board and keep testing it, then I'll know what is the difference between this and, you know, the main difference between KISS ESCs uh, other than the software and these here is uh, the FET driver. Uh, they use a different one. So does the new Maytech uses a completely different FET driver. But everybody else is using this one here. It's super cheap too. So yeah, that's going to conclude it for this part of the video. This is the anatomy of the ESC or how to fix any ESC. I don't know what to call it just yet. But um, yeah, we just covered the FET driver. And hopefully that made a lot of sense to most people. And um, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And again, we'll revisit the FET driver once we cover the MOSFETs, how they're connected. And then once we also cover the microcontrol unit, how that's connected, and then we'll do a complete roundup all together. So I'm just giving you the basic knowledge right now. So in a future video, you'll understand this a bit more. And I really do hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. Please consider joining my Patreon. I do need all the support I could possibly get to continue this series and other series just like this. And I'll have things linked down below if you could check those out. Those greatly support the channel. And again, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Let me know what you think and take care.